My Journey to the Stars. The slide that you're seeing right now is a potpourri that I've put together um, of some of my uh, earlier uh, pictures. Um, the bottom left corner was a picture of the moon, uh, the moment that Neil Armstrong um, set foot. And uh, I sent that off to the uh, Winnipeg Free Press. And uh, this is in, uh, <clears throat> in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And uh, they, uh, they put it on the front page of the newspaper with all of the... Uh, Apollo uh, photographs, so I was stunned to be part of the uh, the, the photos that uh, were put together uh, in this Homeward Bound um, issue. The slide that you see now is um, Dr. Frank Shin, who uh, took me under his wing and uh, was teaching me how to grind and polish uh, a telescope mirror. Um, from scratch. This was my first photograph ever published uh, of an astronomical object in the, uh, I think it's the Winnipeg Free Press, and uh, it was just uh, a, a couple of stars together, but uh, I was sure proud at the time to be published in, in Sky and Telescope magazine. There's Modern Astronomy magazine, and uh, this is a good shot because it shows in Winnipeg um, my telescope that's homemade. Um, we've ground and polished the the optics and uh, ourselves, and my neighbor illuminized the, the mirror for me, and uh, the dome in the background is where I could put the telescope if I wanted to, or I designed it so I could tow it behind the car and you'll see the wheels on the whole telescope was a, a trailer and the, the barrel of the telescope was lifted off and put in that box that I'm sitting on so it wouldn't get damaged uh, during travel. This was uh, gleanings for ATM in uh, Sky and Telescope magazine and it shows my dome in the observatory um, in the backyard. It also features the telescope with all the other telescopes that are fastened to the side of it. This shot here shows uh, the Orion Nebula um, taken through the telescope. This particular shot also shows the uh, telescope, uh, or at least the camera mounted on the side uh, of the telescope and uh, for again uh, published uh, in Sky and Telescope magazine. This is a, a shot of a, a total eclipse of the sun that uh, was taken from Baker Lake at the Northwest Territories. The uh, Eclipse was uh, sort of uh, very interesting to me because it was uh, in our uh, uh, north of our uh, our province of Manitoba, in in the into the Northwest Territories. And when I learned uh, about this flight, I talked to Air Canada and was uh, able to rent a uh, DC-3 um, to. Um, sell tickets on it to go to Baker Lake and uh, so I just uh, rented the whole aircraft and uh, then sold tickets on it. <clears throat> Those were shadow bands on the um, after totality we had taken the plane above the cloud cover and uh, those are the uh, um, shadow bands that uh, the shows up just immediately after the uh, eclipse. My first uh, small book that was published and uh, astrophotography from film to infinity. And uh, there's me again standing beside the 12-inch uh, telescope. 
I was terribly excited because uh, in my second attempt at grade 11 English, um, I was voted most likely never to publish anything. So I was delighted to be able to uh, do the first astronomy book in 30 years in Manitoba. Uh, and this was uh, my first formal book, uh, Deep Sky Objects, um, was another sort of um, triumph in my life. This was uh, the only uh, second astronomy book ever published in Canada. And uh, it uh, actually, uh, we sold over a thousand copies. And in doing so, it became a bestseller in Canada for a science book. This shows you my off-axis guider that I designed for my telescope, and it's a bit unique, so I thought I would include it. And you can see that there's, um, just off to the, to the left here is a prism, and it swings anywhere I want in the field. And I can also rotate it at the same time to pick off a suitable guide star for the camera, which is up here. And uh, this gives you a, a, an idea of uh, what you can do uh, with, a, with a lathe and a little ingenuity. Film, um, and I say the, the F word because uh, nobody uses film anymore. But uh, when we use film, we have to try and sensitize the film to make it uh, uh, last, or at least the exposure image would appear to be faster. It's just that when you uh, treat the film and you dry it out, then uh, you can uh, use different ways of doing that, and you'll find that the, the film was uh, appearing much more sensitive. And so that's uh, pure hydrogen, and I'm pressurizing uh, a canister, or at least a, a, a place to put film in uh, to make it sensitive. There's Alice. Uh, I'd phoned her and told her to put the, uh, it into the oven and bake it for four hours um, to drive the moisture out of the film in the pure hydrogen. Well, you know hydrogen. You never know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, uh, uh, it's easy to replace a house. This is a picture of George Ball, who's a ma master uh, machinist and uh, great at uh, designing things. And uh, I asked him if we could develop uh, the cold camera for, uh, for astrophotography. And uh, there's the cold camera and uh, that's the uh, the design to keep the uh, the film uh, so that you can move it from uh, one frame to, to the next you could uh, use the shutter over here on the on the <clears throat> on the right and this is a, a cable to close the shutter and open it and then there is a uh, in this side, you put a, an optical plug and press that against the, the film, and uh, that uh, allowed you to take uh, long time exposures. This camera, I later put them together and sold them, and I was the only guy selling cameras to Japan back then. This is uh, a trip we made to Mauna Kea, and uh, the university uh, of uh, <clears throat> Hawaii gave me uh, four nights on their telescope to use my cold camera. And so we got a trip to, uh, to Mauna Kea and uh, this was the photo photographs uh, that uh, we managed to get on the front cover of Astronomy Magazine. The STV was a, a helpful auto-guider and uh, that uh, is just a picture of the equipment that we used years ago. And this was the uh, first CCD camera, the first chip that uh, changed the, uh, the whole world of astrophotography. 
And as soon as I got one, I immediately uh, wanted to uh, make it so that it could take color. And uh, so I took filters, red, green, and blue, and uh, was able to take an image. And this is color balancing the camera. And uh, you wanted to get it to be neutral gray. And uh, this is the, the color balancing that I did to, uh, to the black and white film to give us color. And there was the very first shot I took through a CCD camera. In fact, that anybody went through a CCD camera. And uh, this is the a ring nebula. And normally I would have to take about 30 minutes of exposure with film to get a picture like that. And uh, this was uh, taken uh, with a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter, and it was four minutes. So the difference was just unbelievable uh, when you uh, moved into uh, digital photography. This was the, the CAT um, computer that uh, helped us with our photography. This was the first picture of a star um, ever taken in the daytime and this was right next to the sun and it's uh, Castor, I believe Castor or Pollux, the Gemini twins. Nobody had been able to take pictures in the daytime of, uh, of stars um, until I figured out that uh, they were certainly doable with your CCD cameras. The Cambridge Deep Sky album was a Cambridge University Press and was a, uh, all done with color and uh, co-author, which did a lot of the writing, which was Philip Teese, my f first book with Cambridge. My telescope uh, needed to, uh, to get to dark sky, so uh, I designed a trailer for it, and this is with it set up uh, on the trailer, and uh, it was uh, towed behind the Fiero, and this was uh, shot in our yard in Victoria, and I was uh, using dry nitrogen here. There's a canister of it to uh, so that I could uh, use the cold camera and uh, use that to keep the film dry. And we eventually built on top of Mount Matheson, and this is our home with our observatory built onto the house, and a picture of the Straits of Juan de Fuca from uh, top of Mount Matheson. That's the other side of the house. And there's Hale Bob, a comet that seemed to be around our area of the sky for uh, for ever so long, and this was taken with my uh, telescope. And there's the setup uh, when it's uh, together inside the observatory, uh, which I had just built and moved it off the trailer and onto it. That's another picture now of the, the Mead telescope, and you can see the solar telescope underneath. And this is similar to the setup that we have today. Once we uh, finished um, building our home in, in <clears throat> Minnesota's, um, we immediately went down and uh, opened up the uh, Florida Imaging Center. And this was a, a big 80 foot long, double wide, uh, with five bedrooms and and four bathrooms, and it uh, <clears throat> was used for teaching astrophotography. And this was looking inside, and you can see the uh, array of telescopes that I have. This is a dark room in the in the back, so you could uh, um, be warm while you're uh, while you're shooting. Of course, we're in Florida, so warmth uh, uh, is only required at night when the the temperature drops. But uh, this is a, a Mead 16-inch uh, telescope, and I think a Mead 14-inch. Uh, and that's 
Scott Roberts, and uh, I told him uh, he was a vice president of Mead Instruments, and uh, I was using uh, their equipment pretty much exclusively. And I said, Scotty, we're going to go and show you some alligators uh, since we lived in Florida. And uh, so this was the, the pond that, that has the gators. And there's a, a gator to, that I showed him. And he kind of rolled his eyes at the beginning And when I said, we'll go and find you an alligator. And of course, we're about 30 feet away. And uh, he was very uneasy and uh, later appreciative of the the trip to see alligators. I was uh, able to uh, to get time, which you saw earlier on in Mauna Kea, and uh, this was their uh, telescope they loaned me to uh, to Bowler and uh, Chivins, and I got uh, three nights to test out my uh, cold camera. And this one here is the uh, the way we would do red, green, and blue to put together to give you a colored image. Because the camera is black and white. These were front cover shots of images taken uh, through my telescope. Uh, with uh, CCD cameras. And you can see the uh, wrap, dumbbell nebula on the left and the whirlpool on the right. And that was the galaxy shot that you could see with your naked eye and uh, which I'll show people um, in, the, in the evening through our telescope here in, in Osoyas. And uh, this galaxy is uh, 29 million light years away and we can see it with your naked eye in the telescope. These were jets coming off the nucleus of uh, a comet and uh, you can see each dot represents a, a layer of, uh, of time and we stack them to, uh, to get uh, deeper into uh, the photograph. One of the, the biggest challenges was, uh, more recently actually, was photographing a black hole. And they did this in uh, M87. And it, uh, they used interferometry where they took radio telescopes starting in, uh, in Canada, in British Columbia here, and then with atomic clocks, um, they worked their way down through multiple uh, tele radio telescopes uh, until they got to, uh, I guess, as far as the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, they tied them all together using atomic clocks so the um, photographs were all identical at the same moment in time. And when they put them all together, they were um, able to get the picture of the black hole itself. Um, over top of the, the galaxy that it's, uh, that it's in. We were, again, very uh, fortunate to uh, be able to shoot the bipolar jet coming out of M87 with my telescope um, from uh, the observatory B&B &B here. And you can see the, uh, this is a bipolar jet coming out of the telescope taken with the, uh, well, the telescope upstairs. The Hubble Space Telescope was used to photograph a very um, um, cluster of galaxies, and they took uh, many hundreds of shots and then combined them all together, and they were able to uh, see the lensing marks of uh, of uh, objects that were much, much further away. And these were um, streaks of, uh, of uh, light uh, emanating out of the, uh, <clears throat> the combination of uh, many, many photographs put together. And so for the heck of it, I thought I'd shoot that same uh, deep sky photograph 
uh, with mine from upstairs here. There's the picture I got of that. So with the blueprint, you can see what you can get with your own telescope. And this was taken uh, um, over uh, <clears throat> one, one evening's work. But it uh, shows you what an amateur can do. Um, taking a, a shot of the same area that uh, the Hubble Space Telescope had taken. This is a, <clears throat> a book I did with Terence Dickinson, and it's called Splendors of the Universe. And that book uh, um, actually was a bestseller um, in Canada, and uh, it uh, was a great co collaboration. And uh, unfortunately, uh, um, Terence has, has passed away now, but uh, it was the first book that I had done with Terry. Here is the solar telescope um, so that we can look at the sun in hydrogen alpha light, which allows us to see enormous detail on the sun itself. Here's a picture that I was taken through that telescope. And uh, this uh, is showing uh, a large solar prominence. And this was, uh, uh, this is a, the sun has cycles and uh, the, um, this was uh, the last solar cycle, the new solar cycle we're, we're in right now. And uh, <clears throat> this was the, uh, the last one. And uh, uh, there was quite a story with this picture. Um, I had guests that had uh, arrived at uh, about two in the afternoon. And I said, before you unpack, come on up. There's three beautiful sunspots on the sun and uh, so we opened up the, the telescope and lo and behold one of them was gone it had blown up and uh, there was only two remaining this was an enormous explosion and they call it a coronal mass ejection and uh, a few days later when it slammed into the earth the aurora was so bright they could see it in california this made the Life magazine's year-end in pictures. And uh, the, uh, later on, uh, the National Geographic uh, also uh, uh, displayed it. And uh, that's uh, an, another shot taken through the, the telescope. And today we can uh, look uh, through the telescope with the hydrogen alpha filter and we can actually see it in, in real time. And that's uh, Venus. Uh, we had two solar transits of Venus, and then you have to wait another uh, 100 years or so before it happens again. And uh, there's uh, um, Venus um, leaving, leaving the sun. We went uh, Eastern United States to uh, to get this because it uh, the sun just rose and moments later the uh, Venus uh, left uh, so we didn't have much opportunity. <clears throat> I was very fortunate too to uh, um, to be uh, at the uh, Texas Star Party and uh, the. Uh, an astronaut was booked with us because all the speakers were, and uh, Don Pettit was the astronaut, and we struck up a, uh, a friendship over the time that we were billeted together. And he said, anytime you're in Houston, I'll give you a behind the scenes tour of the Johnson Space Center, uh, like what nobody gets. And so here we are at the Johnson Space Center, sitting uh, in the space shuttle, and uh, he said, don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our, <clears throat> our observatory bed and breakfast uh, in British Columbia. And uh, this was uh, taken by a, a helicopter that uh, Alice uh, got me for a birthday present. And they, we got them to go up and so I could take a picture of the, our observatory. This was a, a view from our home uh, out uh, the front windows 
and this was a, a rainbow that had formed below us. And uh, this was, uh, I think, on our opening day, which was uh, a nice sign. There's the view out the, uh, the windows in our living room, and of course, sunsets are absolutely spectacular. And there's your northern lights, um, a very strong display. And you can see the, uh, when you start to get red in your, um, in your northern lights, you, you know that uh, it's a very intensive uh, display. And this is the, the town of uh, Osoyas below. We're 1,400 feet above the valley and above the light pollution. And you can see the stars up in the sky here. This is the telescope configuration in, uh, in Canada. And you can see the garage door opener that uh, I modified so it would open and close the dome. And uh, this was the, uh, the Mead uh, telescope. And uh, this was uh, the newest addition to, uh, to the dome. And, uh, there's a shot taken through the uh, through the telescope of the Orion Nebula. And of course, when you're living in the wilderness up, uh, Alice said, there's a bear in the yard, go and shoo it away. And I said, dear, um, you go and shoo, shoo it away. <laughs> At any rate, I, I went out and, and uh, talked to the bear and, he finally left. That's a bighorn sheep in our front yard. And then we had a, a fire that uh, actually had started our, our property. Um, the acre, it's got large acreage and it goes down to the road, the highway, and uh, a, a semi-trailer with uh, locked rear brakes was putting sparks out. Uh, um, from the, the, tra the trailer and uh, it started a fire in our yard down at the road that worked its way up and uh, you can see it candled this uh, tree uh, in, our, in our front yard. These are the Martin Mars um, water bombers and uh, they arrived uh, about four hours later and uh, this is it uh, hammering the uh, um, the front yard, I could, uh, I could see the, the pilot from where I was standing. This is a, a Martin Mars uh, coming over our backyard and uh, the, uh, the house on top of the hill. And the Martin Mars is dropping here, went right over top of us. And I got wet actually from that drop. We've now switched gears and uh, we're into Arizona. This is showing the construction of uh, our observatory in Arizona. This is the Arizona um, Sky Village um, as it is today. And uh, this is a drone shot that I'm doing. This is our, uh, our, our home here. We even have a palm tree. And uh, there's two uh, 15-foot domes and uh, a roll-off roof observatory, and you can see the other uh, <clears throat> the other domes off in the distance. And this is just the uh, the western edge of the Sky Village, and it uh, it stretches out for for many many more acres. And the <clears throat> National Geographic uh, picked up. Uh, the story, and that's a picture of uh, myself with my LED hat on, and we were actually painting the walls so they would show up in the time exposure that the uh, photographer from the National Geographic uh, had set up, and uh, this ended up being published in, so I got my first picture of myself in the National Geographic. And this was uh, Milky Way from Milky Way, <laughs> the name of the street. It's 
it's an image of a bald eagle uh, taken from the deck of the bed and breakfast. This is one of our neighbors over for a drink in our garden. These are javelinas that are sort of like wild pigs. You can go beep beep, a roadrunner. An owl making a luncheon selection from our bird feeder. There's a coyote in the front yard and having a drink. And of course, lots of birds. This uh, roll-off roof observatory uh, has uh, the solar telescope in it when, uh, when I take it down. And uh, also you can see uh, um, a mead 16 inch and uh, the uh, ability to, uh, to have uh, another couple of telescopes. And this is uh, actually uh, my t telescope that uh, I use for hunting for supernova, showing off the lens system for it. I'm one of Canon photographers and that's uh, one of uh, my photographs uh, in, uh, in an ad that, uh, that Canon produced. And the Seven Sisters, the Pleiades, uh, also known as Subaru, if you're uh, in Japan. And these are young blue stars. Stars are born blue and they die red and they change color all through their life. So you can always tell where they are by their color. And right now you've got blue stars, young blue stars, going through a dusty patch in the Milky Way and uh, lighting it up. That's the Witch Head Nebula. And that's uh, Rigel, the bottom right star in uh, Orion. And this is uh, the most beautiful area of the of the Milky Way and uh, in this particular shot you're uh, seeing uh, a great uh, globular uh, globular clusters and uh, uh, an emission nebula dark nebula in here and uh, reflection nebula so you've got uh, almost the whole gamut of nebulas they use that term for many different things. The Andromeda Galaxy, that's the, the, the anchor in our local group of galaxies. There's about uh, 12 or 14 um, galaxies that uh, are orbiting this one. And actually ours is being pulled the Milky Way toward it. And we're going to collide with this uh, galaxy and we're going to go right through it and then come back through it and then merge and we'll knock the spiral arms off both our galaxies and we'll be a giant elliptical galaxy. That's a comet with the comet tail and the, the dust taken from the observatory in Arizona. This particular uh, uh, comet was uh, picked up by NASA and ended up in the newspapers all over the world. And I was kind of annoyed because I didn't get any credit other than that uh, NASA had picked it up from me. But I was uh, lucky that a, a guy that uh, was putting telescopes in a, a program um, in the Southern Hemisphere and got in touch with us. And uh, so we ended up uh, getting a free trip down to the Southern Hemisphere, which was good. This is my plane wave setup. And there's the tracking of the, uh, this is a, a tenth of an arc second. And uh, the telescope, the plane wave is tracking at two tenths of an arc second. The red being the, um, right ascension and blue being declination. That's a beautiful uh, nebula 
and called the Rosette. In the Orion Nebula, the Great Orion Nebula, the middle star and the sword hanging down from Orion's belt. And there's the Horsehead Nebula, the horse's head, which is a dark nebula and blocking out the light from behind. And uh, this is uh, an, a nebula here and uh, Zeta Orionis. Cloud of ionized hydrogen and, uh, and uh, oxygen. The O3 comes through as aquamarine and the red is the, is the hyd ionized hydrogen. There's the middle portion of it. And the other, there's three big chunks of it. This is some of my best work. That's the California Nebula. Another active area in the Milky Way. This is uh, called a Christmas tree nebula, and I guess because of that looks like the star and maybe a Christmas tree there. This is above the Orion Nebula. And the Rosette. hydrogen out there to play with. This looks like a giant eye looking back at you and it's uh, ionized hydrogen and ionized oxygen. This is a Messier 33 beautiful spiral galaxy and of course the Great Andromeda Galaxy, and that's the one that's uh, pulling our galaxy toward it and uh, will merge eventually. I did a lot of uh, supernova hunting, and this is the telescope uh, that uh, I use. This picture shows you my first 70 supernova discoveries. I now have over 200, which puts me number one in the world for amateur astronomers. This shot here I took with the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's two colliding galaxies. And in the, the, the picture, there's a uh, supernova that I discovered. And this was a write-up that the professionals did on my time on Hubble. And that's Buzz Aldrin, who uh, I met uh, in New York when I was uh, on the early show on uh, CBS and uh, Explore Scientifics using me as a, a prop of their showing off their telescope. This picture shows the professional uh, version of my time on the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a picture of Alice and myself relaxing and without Alice, uh, with a tremendous amount of support she gives for me. She's the love of my life and uh, I just uh, had to uh, show the other half that does 99% of the work. Thank you, Alice.